Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Wait, wait. I got some music for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream, Mikey Bastard of Citizen I'm sorry, I have so much fun with that soundboard. And I felt you definitely deserve a grand intro, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I am fantastic. I am so to have you here. You and I have had the pleasure of playing a lot of shows together, being at a lot of shows together. But we yeah. have not had the pleasure to just sit down in a quiet environment. I know I made it real noisy off the hop, but this is a nice <laughs> quiet environment off the hop and be able to actually just chill and chat. And I'm really stoked for this. Um, I want to encourage anyone in the chat joining us to, if you have any questions, feel free to bring them up as we go along. Uh, but Mikey, first and foremost, how have you been these past few months since Moments, Moments Fest? Uh, good. Good really good actually yeah i'm uh i went through kind of a shitty patch mental health wise and i was at the tail end of that with uh moments fest but uh i'm coming through all of it i'm doing great got me some therapy so uh yeah i'm doing awesome that's awesome that's that's really good to hear you didn't seem like you were that off at moments fest but much like a lot of different individuals i imagine you're pretty good at least uh, masking what whatever's going on up here very good at keeping yeah. that down because uh, the past two shows we've had the pleasure of being at together, you've always been very, very, like, high energy in the, like, really good ways, like, very positive. It was actually really funny. I think it was right before your set. We had everything set up. We're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to wait a few extra minutes for the other band to wrap up before this one. Cool, I'm going to go have a few hoots quickly. And then you just come sauntering out from the darkness, being like, oh, doing the pre-show, I see. Good. Oh, good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it was, yeah, I wandered out of that field. Yeah, it was yeah. So, it was awesome. So for those that don't know, Mikey, uh, let everyone know just a little bit about yourself and what you do right now. Uh, I'm Mikey Bastard. My real name is Mike Johnson. Bastard is a goofy nickname that I got when I was like, I don't know, 19 or 20, and it stuck. And I I leaned into it for a long time, and then it's it's I don't think there's any escaping it anymore i'm a bass player and a guitar player i've been playing bass for citizen rage for oh seven years now i want to say maybe eight years i want to say um, i think you've been in the band since i've known a citizen rage and i think i found out probably. about you guys around 2014 2015 i joined at the very beginning of 2015 okay awesome like january of 2015 awesome so, uh, do my fingers man. hell yeah uh p-i-n-d and he has some whimsical questions once in a while, but he asks, does the adrenaline of playing just make any pain disappear? Make any... Any pain disappear. I don't know if he means mental or physical on that one, but yeah, how does adrenaline um, work for you when you hit the stage? That's, I, I like that, actually. Uh, yeah, I would say it's like... Yeah, I can forget like whatever I'm dealing with. I can usually just forget as soon as I'm on stage. Um, not always. There's been times when I can't, but yeah, it is just like like a switch goes off as soon as the amp turns on. Hell yeah. And then that's, I think that's why everybody calls it an escape. Like playing music is the escape because you just like, you get in that zone and that's like the, the instrument in your hand is the only thing that's going on right then. Hell yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, one, uh, he means on a physical aspect, I imagine that would be the same too. I know um, for myself, not all the time, like if you got like a broken bone, like standing isn't the same, but um, Mikey, for those that don't know, he goes, he goes pretty hard on stage when he can. And I don't think I've ever seen him stagnant. So if he was ever hurt in any of those days, he, he never let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been curious because I've always known you to be like this really solid fucking bass player. Like, you and Corpsey, thank I think, you. were the two... I feel the same way about you, man. Oh, thank you. Because, um, yeah, when I came into the Calgary scene with Oath and I had the pleasure of playing with Citizen Rage and playing with Stab Twist Pole, the things... I, I gravitate to those finger bassists. I'm just like, oh, these guys are... 
Yeah, that's that's some spice right in there. And both of <laughs> yeah. you just blow my fucking mind. And that's nothing against any other bass player. I, I completely under- understand the difference in technique and preference. And that's not shitting on a pick. I just, if you guys like like that style of bass playing, you guys will definitely like what Mikey has to do. But with that, has that been your main instrument your whole life? Or was there like something else you started with? Or uh, was that kind of your um, bread and butter? Technically, I would say I started on guitar, but only because I got a guitar before I got a bass, and it just wasn't coming. I was trying and trying, and it wasn't clicking, and then a guy I went to school with, he was the only guy with a band, and he said, my bass player just quit. Come and play bass for us. I was like, I've never played bass. He says, I'll teach you. Okie dokie. <laughs> he, he taught me to play with a pick and play three notes, and that was all I needed for a shitty grunge band when I was 15 years old. But uh, I definitely, like, I stopped playing guitar for years after that because I fell in love with bass. And now I'm, like, I'm kind of a hack on guitar, but I picked it up again and got, like, I played guitar in bands, and it's fun, but bass is, like, I feel more like myself when I'm playing bass. I feel like I'm posturing when I'm playing guitar. I feel, I feel like bass is my instrument. The bass feels like more of an extension of yourself musically. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely get that. That's awesome. Uh, nothing else uh, there right now. They, um, he says, thank you for the answer. Um, oh, no there. problem. How uh, many people are watching? I've we never, got, uh, I've we got five right like now. Uh, every okay. once in a while, uh, it does kind of grow and fluctuate throughout things. Uh, yeah, usually yeah. BG raids us from the main show, but I think uh, the internet decided to kibosh his plan for the day. So everyone that was paying attention, I think, is making their way over, in which case okay. we appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, that's really cool. So you started playing uh, bass around 15 and you started in a grunge band. That's yeah, that's really cool. So like uh, what what kind of grunge were you like into at the time? Or were you into grunge or did you just kind of join it to join it? I joined it to join it. I, the dude was uh, two years older than me, I think, and I, I was young and just kind of looked up. I mean, he's oh, he's the guy in the band. He's got a band. That's what I want to do. And so, it, like, I I listened to a little bit of Nirvana, but I was already getting into punk rock at that point and not what? super into grunge. But he, he was obsessed with Nirvana, so uh, that that's all that he wrote. And I couldn't write yet. I'd been playing for, like, well, I mean, the first time I picked up a bass was my first jam with those cats. Well, at least, like, Nirvana's an interesting starting route, too, for bass, I find. Because there's the simple aspects, and then there's some of the runs here and there. So, And that's really cool. Like, the whole, no, I wasn't into it, really. I just wanted to play, and I looked up to the guy. That's that's really awesome. So has uh, punk kind of, like, always been the main foundation musically or was there anything that um you first got into before you transitioned more into uh punk rock um there was a lot of hip-hop just before punk rock and then i kind of found punk and new metal at the same time but uh yeah it was it was just punk and metal for a long time and now it's uh there's a lot more hip-hop and pop music and I had a lot of years where I was like, if it's not punk or metal, it sucks, and anybody who listens to it is stupid. And then I got over that, and now it's like, there's so much. It's so funny how that seems to be like almost something everyone in heavy music has to go through. Like, they'll all start in something soft, and nothing is hip-hop. It's not soft in reads, what I mean, just in like the comparison of how the wall of sound yeah. comes, and yeah. um, or pop, and then they'll move into whatever aspect of the genres grip them. And then about five or six years in, they'll really know what they like about that music. Yeah. And that's all yeah, that fucking matters. <laughs> yeah. You get into your little box. <laughs> yeah. And then I find uh, you really see those musicians, um, not all of them, but you find almost a little bit of stagnation in them. Like some of them maybe get really fucking good at those styles. If they're musicians or some of them get yeah. really knowledgeable about those styles. If they're just listeners but once they finally hit that, you know, maybe I'm going to go back to that old Fall Out Boy record and give, I'm going to give Emo a chance again, or I'm going to give Green Day a chance again. You notice they kept yeah. Oh, oh shit, that's right. I like this for a reason. <laughs> okay, you know what? Everything's good. I'm back again. My, I have a friend who occasionally stops by and he's signaling me with his phone with a picture of a lighter. He's just like, hand that, hand that over. I was trying to not get, <laughs> trying to keep it going straight, and then you just bring it up anyways. <laughs> hey, it's fun. It's fun. Um, 
Anything else? Okay, so um, you went through that. Did you do any other bands uh, between then? Because you said you said join Citizen Rage around 2015. Yeah. And I'm guessing you were in your teenage years around like the 2000s because you said you got into a lot of like new metal and stuff around then. Um, were you like constantly playing in bands from then out or did you take any breaks or like what was that time before Citizen Rage like? Oh, it was pretty constant with bands. I was in a lot like, uh, well, you know, the press gang. Oh, shit. OK, OK. Yeah, I, I played lead for the press gang for quite a few years. Um, I played bass with Conniving Cadavers for a while. Um, I played lead in the Rigor Morticians with my wife for how long was that? Probably five years. At least five years. Yeah, about five years with the Riggers. The Riggers were around for quite a while before that, but okay. my stint with them was a couple years at least, yeah. That's amazing. To everyone who doesn't know, because I know we have some viewers from the States here and there, too, um, aside from just Canada, um, all these bands are like, decently well-known bands within the Calgary underground scene. Like everyone's seen them play at least once in some way, shape or form throughout the past decade. They're like, they're like staples now of Calgary hardcore. At some point you're going to, you're going to see them at some point in time, the press gang. I think I booked a show for them in 2018, but um, ran into them a few times just in the Calgary scene, just being at shows. Like you guys are just everyone from that era. It seems to be, everywhere because that's one thing i noticed as a outsider like just someone coming from a different scene mm. and seeing how like seeing how the local scene kind of interacts with itself like oh how's everyone going and you can definitely be like oh shit there's like a good chunk of these guys that have been here for a while and just fucking love this and support it and we'll show that's that's cool that's that's honestly really inspiring coming from a small scene like medicine hat because Oh, God damn. You, you were here at the start of our scene, basically, like starting to grow. I remember the first Citizen Rage show. It was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. Here's Liquid. Oh, yeah, great venue. Huge venue. Great stage. Oh, You're going to see With so the, uh, the male stripper posters everywhere yeah. and uh, the go go girl cages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, you gonna, guys are going to see a lot of floor. But we're, we're, the people that show up, they're going to they're gonna go. And yeah, that, and I remember that being a really fun night. That there was not a lot of people, but it fucking went off. Like we partied. We had a great time that night. Hell yeah, it, exactly. And now, what I really like about that is all those people. Um, although it's a small handful, they're the same ones that you can now pick out when we bring you guys to the mainliner and fill that place up with fifty to seventy people. If we have a really good night, that core five to ten people, you still still all there being like. Yeah, this is this is fucking cool. I this is cool for them because like fuck yeah, but this is cool. Like we had people show up. This is nice. <laughs> we have a scene, guys. And it, it's cool um again going to like play Calgary shows, kind of noticing that while we were growing and then years later kind of being like, "Oh shit. I think we kind of just created our own mini collective just like that." And it's yeah. It's really awesome. Um, what's it like for you? Cause, uh, being in a band for as long as it is, uh, as you've been in, and you guys have done quite a few different tours. Like you just wrapped up the tour with Deglo abortions at, uh, yeah, that was Mons the biggest one by far that we've done. Uh, actually, let's touch that one first. Um, okay. what the hell was that experience like? Cause I know for you guys like that, that took a while to get going eventually, like with yeah. everything, but what, what was that all like? That must've been awesome. Uh, it's, it was a roller coaster getting it booked and then canceled and then booked again with DRI and then having DRI get canceled and then having it finally get booked a third time. And then it was, <clears throat> it was wild. It was so much more work than I expected. A lot more work, a lot less partying than I expected, but still like, like bucket list type shit. Like one of the best I, I want to say moments, but it was a month, but one of the best experiences in my life. Like we went from coast to coast. We played shows the whole way. We had a good response every single night. And it just, it was amazing. As but man, work, 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 work. I, I, is there anything that you, aside from just like work, is there any, like a few key things that you really uh, took away and learned from that whole experience? Cause 
You guys are all seasoned musicians yourselves. Like, that's your first big tour, but it's not like you haven't gone out on the road, done your own shows, done your own booking, done your own promoting. Hell, one of the guys in your band, like, tried to basically book the entire scene for the longest time just to help out and give back to everyone. Yeah. So, like, you all have a lot of experience there, but hearing you then emphasize, like, there's so much more. Like, what were the key things that kind of stuck out to you throughout that month experience? Um, Canada's huge. Like, we'd never toured into Ontario, and that was, like, a big part of the shock of it was just how long the drives were. Like, to wake, like, we'd sleep for three hours because we had to leave so early the next day, and then we would drive for 14 hours and then look at a map and be like, oh, we're only, like, this far into Ontario. Awesome. Oof. And then, like, yeah, get to a venue, unload, eat, and play. Like, there was so little downtime on some of those days. That's That's got to be crazy, because that's the one thing I have heard from... Uh, I heard it a lot from Chris from Reckless Heroes after they did their Canada-wide tour. Just the whole, it's not that we don't like the, the country. It's like, once we leave Alberta, you're you are driving most of the time. And it is oh, yeah. just a burden. And yeah, uh, just hearing that, it makes me like really think about like when shows do come, like larger ones of larger bands in uh, the metal and punk genres and going, oh, maybe that's why, you know, you only ever see two or three canadian dates at any point in time it's not that they don't want to be yeah. it's that well it's it's not worth the travel un unfortunately well, like just logistically like if you look at the layout of canada versus the layout of the states like if when you're in the states you can go from a state capital to another state capital to another state capital and you got like three hours of driving every day and each city's going to be a different market in canada Vancouver to Kelowna, what's that's probably seven, eight hours. Oh, Kelowna God, to Calgary yeah. is another eight. You're okay in Alberta between Calgary and Edmonton, but then Edmonton to Saskatoon is six more. Beyond that is when you're into the giant drives. Like yeah. it's just that's why it's so much easier to tour the states. Or so I'm told anyway. But yeah, that's that's so many shorter drives. That makes sense because it can't be easy on the body to be crammed into a vehicle for fourteen hours and have everyone rotating through um how did you guys pass the time during that because that's got to be man cabin fever is a thing but i i can't imagine what it's like just crammed in for 14 hours day in day out for a bit for the most part it's not quite as social as i thought it was going to be everybody just sort of like shuts the fuck up <laughs> in the van everybody's got their headphones in or their books in their face or whatever it is so nobody's really get needled or anything try not to annoy each other i i had my headphones in and would just download tv shows and movies onto my phone and i would just curl up by myself that's as, good as much as possible that's yeah. good i'll pass the time because you guys don't have room to like play anything especially like all your gears probably in the same vehicle or i can't remember did you guys have just one large vehicle with everything or did you have a trailer attachment uh, we actually, we had two vehicles for this one because we had the big, huge van with a small U-Haul behind it. Right. And that had most of us and uh, the Dayglow guys and their merch guy. But our drummer's dad wanted to do the whole tour with us, so he brought his van. So drummer and his dad were in a minivan behind us, and we convoyed okay. for the whole thing. And, like, traded off. Um, when Pops needed a break, I'd jump in there and drive his van for a day. Chase would jump into our van to, so he could, like, hang out with the boys. That's got to, I guess, be the benefit of having uh, multiple bands on that together because you guys can kind of help each other and, like, yeah. uh, coordinate everything. Um, yeah, that. I, I guess it must have been really nice when you guys got back to the Alberta leg of the tour and went, oh, thank God, we only have to go for, like, a few hours at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's when we, uh, when we were on the way back, we finished the tour in... Uh, Fredericton, that was the last day. Oh, snap. And then we, yeah, we just hauled ass to get home, and we had planned for another night. Like, we stayed in Winnipeg, and then we were going to stay another night in Regina. Yeah. And all of us were just like, nope, fuck it. We're going all the way home. We don't, we, it was only, I don't know, five, six hours to get to Regina. Yeah. So we're just like, no, we can get home. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. We can power through this. It'll be a long day, but we can get to our own beds tonight. Let's do it. <laughs> teamwork motivation we got this we are gonna make yeah. it 
That's yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, it, it, P-I-N-D, you are not wrong. Canada is huge open spaces. Like, I know in Alberta, a lot of bands and even band members, myself included at times, can be guilty of doing the whole, oh, man, I wish there was more here. Like, it's really cool to have Medicine Hat, Lethbridge, Red Deer, Calgary, Edmonton. But, like, oh, man, what if we had, like, three more hot spots? And then we're failing to be <laughs> like, well, if we go to Saskatchewan, there's maybe two to hit. And then drive time. And then if you go to yep. Manitoba, one? Brandon. Okay, uh, Brandon's two. not two. bad. Okay, yeah. so again, another two. And then and I'm guessing in Ontario, that's when you have maybe a few more that you can hit. But they're all located along the, like, St. Lawrence area. Like, it's all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Once you get to southern Ontario, then it's easy. Because then it's, we were, we had days where we had, like, maybe an hour's drive. And it was awesome. So yeah. We didn't have to get up early. We weren't like in a rush. Nobody screaming, get in the fucking van. We got to go. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine that would just be a pain. Um, damn. <laughs> yeah, there was days where Ross just had to go. Ross went full dad voice on everybody. Yeah. Big old Ross go. All oh, right, man. get in the van. We're leaving. We're leaving now. Piss now because we're not stopping again. Yes, Daddy Ross. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's Papa oh, Roscoe. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, that must have been like out of all your tours, that still with all the work must have been your favorite one. Because again, you're playing with oh, yeah. Canadian punk legends. You're doing it yeah. across all of Canada. Um, the last two shows that I had the pleasure of um, being part of um, were those at the start of the tour, or at the end of the tour, the Med Hat and Moments Fest gigs. Uh, that was technically the end of the tour, but that was like. Pretty After far breaks. removed from the tour. Pretty, yeah. yeah, we did. We did one like real hard month, but that was most of uh, June. Like we were back July 9th, I think. Okay. And then we just booked those four extra dates to like end the tour. Oh, that's uh, we'd fair. We'd been for almost two months at that point, but that was uh, it. Was promoters that wanted us on the first tour, and we just couldn't swing the dates like logistically we couldn't get it and they were like well we still want this tour like, all right well we'll come back and do four more you guys um red deer they still wanted it on the first tour and so we Hell just yeah. like delayed it a little bit and then it just worked out i think it was just luck that moments fest was that same weekend so we're like well we'll finish it off there hell yeah speaking um of moments fest um I, I love what that's turned into. I remember Moments Fest 3 at the arena, and then a few years ago when they <laughs> first moved to the venue they're at now, when they crammed Stage 2 into the... I don't want... I the think tiny it was little band room. Yeah. It was the green room now, oh, yeah. I, and it gets so... Guys, it got so hot in there. Like, after this set, I, I just wanted to bolt out, not because I didn't like anyone, but just because I needed air. Yep. It got so yep. hot in there. But it's so oh, cool to dude. see what it's become. Oh, oh! I was gonna say a big chunk of the the Dagos tour. We were dragging a heat wave with us, so it was the same thing. It was oh. like thirty eight degrees in Saskatoon. It was like forty two in Winnipeg. That's so right, the moment July. that shows down, we're running outside. Did the vehicle at least have AC? It did, but we didn't use it very often because uh, somebody thought it affected their singing voice. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> hey, hey, sometimes, you know, everyone's got a particular thing that they want to maintain. Yeah. And that's yeah. fair enough, especially um, on long trips. Sometimes those compromises have to be made, being like, you know yeah. what? We are, we're all in this together. Fair enough. Anyone got a window? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the worst days, though, I got to drive in uh, – in the drummer's dad's van i drove with pops yep. and he had ac so we just cranked it right up like I, I was pulling over to put my sweater on like oh man it's fucking freezing in here and i love it uh that's... And then we pulled into i think that was coming into saskatoon it was either saskatoon or winnipeg one of the two those were the hottest ones but we pulled in and i'm like okay it's not so bad all those heat warnings but it's not so bad and then the second you open the door it's like a cinder block in your face Oh, and it's so bad in, like, that prairie region. Everything's so flat. Yep. There's nothing for coverage, so it just bakes yep. everything. Oh, man, that's a pain in the butt. Um, yeah. I was going to go, uh, what was I? Oh, yeah, Moments Fest. I, 
absolutely love what Carlin and everyone involved in that has been doing because uh, yeah. coming in this year to like work it and be a part of it and just kind of see how it's developed, uh, especially post pandemic. So I think that's the main thing that excites me is coming, uh, not, I guess we're still in it, but like coming to this stage of where we're at with everything yeah, and seeing the growth there and in the right ways too, in my opinion, like the guys that really care, um, the Jeffs, the Jessies, the Carlins, all the guys in alt waves, like, uh, Keith Mason and Matt, like all those guys yep. are really starting to create something with all the things they're doing. Um, and it's awesome to see this year. I, I'm not going to lie. It's one thing I really loved, especially at Moments Fest. There's something about going there and seeing that be what it was uh, that weekend. Yeah. is really makes me excited for the future. The amount of people that were there was just, I was gobsmacked by that. The amount of kids there. Silly bike. Like, that's, that's, that's right. The silly bike. That punk band of like 16 year olds. Oh. I miss them, and I am so upset about that. And then I was so psyched to play with them last month, and I got COVID. And That's we had to pull right. out of the show. Yeah, oh, and man. everybody has been like, oh, you got to see Silly Bike. You got to see Silly Bike. And in Raven, and so psyched to be on that bill with them. And then, like, that morning is when I tested positive. Oh, shit. What am I might so do? I still haven't seen Silly Bike. What I might do um, for you is um, I haven't. They're not done, and I'm going to release them individually, but I got a live compilation from Alt Waves I'm throwing together, two songs from all the bands that were on my stage. And yeah. for a majority of them, not all of them, but I managed to get mm -hmm. footage of the sets. Most of it's drum footage, but in the case of, like, the earlier bands, I had a webcam shot that actually works because people weren't, like, right in front of it, crowding the shot. So I might quickly render down the two Silly Bike ones in the next few days and just send you a link so you can at least kind of see them because, uh, oh, God would damn. Really appreciate that, because I keep hearing stories. That they keep are hearing stories. Crazy. The drummer, um, it's funny, because we actually talked about this before they're set at Moments Fest, but their drummer, second band of day two, broke the beater end of the drum skin within, like, three songs. So we're sitting there <laughs> panicking. He's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, hold on run out to stage one to find like someone being like, Hey, so here's the situation. And, um, <laughs> Chad from Omar and Western death, uh, the sweetheart that he is goes and runs and grabs his kick so that they can start playing and then goes and grabs the rack Tom for the next song so that we can like, he can have a yeah. more full kit. And then yeah. fast forward to moments fest and we're setting them up and I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to embarrass him because I, I get how that might be something that's in the back of your head. Just being like, don't do that again. Don't do that again. Yeah. And he just yeah. like nonchalantly looks over. He's like, Hey man, stoked for today. Also, don't worry about the kick. I got it this time. And I was just like, <laughs> I love this. I love this. These guys Perfect. are awesome. Um, that's one thing. What's it been like for you being in the scene for a long time? Cause I know for me just getting to, that age where it definitely feels like I'm now getting into seeing the next wave and the next generation of music musicians slowly seep into the scene. What's it been like for you kind of growing and observing and participating in the music scene throughout your career? Um, I got old and cynical about it for a while. And uh, there's in some time where it kind of felt like being in a band was a chore and I didn't like it, but I think that also tied in with some of the mental health stuff. But then uh, to start going out and seeing younger and younger bands, it, it just like, it lights a fire. As I look around and remember being that age and that fucking hungry. And it's like, when did I lose that? I don't, I want that back. And like, I'm, I'm psyched again, but to see that many kids, that many young bands, just like ripping it up now is awesome. The talent that we're seeing too come out of all these young guys, yeah. like it blows my mind how young the uh, the three piece in Rising Sun is, like to see them at oh, all waves. Heard. Oh, you should check out Rising Sun. They're a three piece thrash band from Edmonton. I had them on okay. my stage for Alt Waves, and then Jeff brought me to work sound for them in Drum Heller around the Moments Fest time. I think it was like the weekend before, and. For Alt Waves, they had the drummer of Vibes filling because their drummer had, uh, I think, a broken hand or something. So I got to see okay. the full lineup at Drumheller. And my fucking God. Yeah. 
they are so goddamn tight and they're fun to watch and realizing hey these guys are like 21 20 and being oh, like shit. god god damn or uh, even the kids um i were you there for the opening band um at moments fest no i got there pretty late okay well not pretty late but, but were, i mean i missed a lot of bands that's fair there was um the opening band was basically a guitar school like our music school so they had oh lightning ant yeah yeah, yeah. Th- they were that was so cool just starting the day off with them um we had some like talks just um back and forth on just like okay here's how to make your guys's rig a bit easier with the back and forth yeah. in the future for your guys because i can i have the ability to do everything we need to do but that's because i got like we got a festival set up here like I'm, yeah. That's not always going to be the case. So if you end up in smaller places, here's an idea. Yeah. Just chatting back and forth. And then when they actually started playing, like, it was so cool hearing them cover, like, everything from System of Down to Metallica and Megadeth. Yeah. Um, the one kid, I can't remember his name, but he had this mad frontman vibe on him. Like, you could tell he's like, oh, no. The, out of anyone who's going to, like, get bit by the I want to do this bug, yeah, he, he's already been bit. Like everyone else Perfect. looks like they're having fun and this is this is great. He's like, no, no, I'm I'm here having fun and doing research at the same time. I may only be twelve, yeah. but watch out for when I'm eighteen. <laughs> yeah, but I'm in training. <laughs> exactly. And seeing that is yeah. so cool. Like it's yeah. weird how that hits you because like you said, it kind of reminds you of that yeah. fire that you have, like the reason you want to do things, the things you enjoy about it too. I think that's a really big thing because as we do it and as we um, play with our peers and we hit the shows and we kind of see the same people as we hit our like different circuits and certain bands end up, I find not intentionally, but just being on the same bills. Like you see a lot of bands that end yeah. up playing together a lot over time and you see some familiar faces it's nice to get that reminder from like anyone else that you're unfamiliar with and just being like, Oh shit. Okay. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. Today's yeah. going to be a good night. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can disclose whatever amount of it you want to, but I do want to ask, cause I do feel it's good and it's important that this is more of a conversation people are willing to have. Um, how long did it take for you to realize that, your mental health was something you had to work on. Cause I know that's a damn hard thing for any of us to admit if we're going through shit, like it's, we um, are very resistant to it as people. I yeah, find. Absolutely. It's, it took longer than I should, than it should have, but, uh, it was pointed out to me quite a while ago. Like, Hey, you might have depression. You should look into this. Like this, this might not be normal. And typical, like, no, I'm fine. Boys don't cry. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'll deal with it. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I, when would it have been? I think it was when I did my last term of school, trade school. And it was just... It was getting out of hand with panic attacks and depression. And, like, I could barely make it through a work day more often than not. Um, and, yeah, I finally saw a doctor and sorted it out but it was even the first time i dealt with dealt with it started i gave up like i got scared because it's a Mm -hmm. it's a really tough thing to do to like confront these things um and then it kind of turned into the thing that citizen rage does pretty organically where it just built up and then i i noticed for the last couple years i've been on stage being like hey I have depression and I have anxiety and there's no shame in getting help. And I said it over and over and over and was still, I'm not going to do it. I'm not getting any help. I'm not getting any help. And then, uh, like I was saying, it it was this year, like that. I finally was like, I need to do something about this. Like something serious about it. It's a huge thing to accept that about yourself. And that can go for anyone because I think we will all find reasons to justify why we are okay. It's like, yeah. no, I'm good. I just have to deal with this and this. If I didn't yeah, have to deal yeah. with that, I would seem a lot happier. I'm just yeah, stressed, yeah. Once whatever. this external stressor is gone, I'll be okay. But then when that leaves and you're still not okay, rather than do anything about it, you're like, okay, well, what's the next thing I'm going to blame instead of looking inward? Yeah, and 
and I did that for years and years and years. I find for for some, it unfortunately needs to come to that point of having no one else to blame, and that's not um, a. I know it sounds weird to say it's not a bad thing. Some pe- sometimes that's the route people need to take to finally be introspective. Some people are better yeah, at recognizing I think, yeah. it. I think it's the phrasing there, though. Like rather than look at it like no one else to blame, so you have to blame yourself. I think it's more of uh, like you have to accept that it's it's an internal thing and not an external thing. But it's not so much blame. I think that's where. I guess that's, that's where. where it comes. I like I thank you for that's actually a way better way of phrasing it because I think yeah. viewing it that the way I phrased it I think is what leads to people refusing to go that route and instead yeah funny instead of just realizing it's not an external problem but an internal one it allows you to assess yourself more truthfully and uh, yeah. I appreciate that correction because that's the verbiage around it is actually yeah. extremely important exactly the little things matter the little things matter when it comes to that like it's not blame because it's it, like nobody's at fault. 100%. Oh, mm. well, oh, Queen Lizzie, that is 100% okay. I appreciate you lurking. We will see you shortly. If anyone has more questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and I, I like that you tie that into Citizen Rage because that's one thing I've really loved about Citizen Rage is, yes, it's punk. Yes, it's hardcore. Yes, it's aggr- aggressive as fuck. And yes, every once in a while, you're going to have a song where Mark just has to go, hey, yeah, I'm old. I'll still fuck you up if you get on my bad side. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, th- the overall- if you know what that song's about, though, that's another one of those positive songs that's just hidden under a bunch of like punk rock anger. But that's about standing up to bullies. Yeah, that's not Mark just beating people up. That's like fucking pick on people. Don't pick on anybody smaller than you. Don't be a dick or you might get a Mark Russell punch in the face. Exactly. And um, yeah. if you know, Mark, positivity's or- in there. yeah, if you know, Mark, or you know, the band and you're like, like, no of that, you know, that to be the case, because Mark is. He's a giant fucking teddy bear. I love that man. He does He's like so the, much. The most loving dude in the world. He really is. Like, um, it's weird to say, but your guys' influence on our scene, I think, cannot be um gauged. Cause I do really feel like you guys in particular had a very positive effect on our scene because of things like your attitudes, how humble you guys came across how wholesome you guys are and just how you interact with people but also the message behind your music because even though for yourself for several years like you admitted like you were weren't practicing what you were preaching yeah in those moments they still felt genuine to everyone and everyone else um maybe was helping kind of pick up for you are you were very good also good at masking it and presenting yourself in the way that suited the message but even having you admit like no i had to go through that as well and now practicing what you preach it helps reinforce yeah. everything and i love that because not only have you guys grown you've grown without having to alter yourself and what the band stands for you connect organically with people because you're not a afraid to deal with um, difficult subject matter and yeah. being uh, afraid to address things that people may be going to a show are, are there to maybe vent out about in the pit and just like let their yeah. things out and go, but aren't expecting to actually have what it is they're dealing with thrown in their face, not in a negative way, just like yeah, yeah. verbally stated and coming out of the speakers and allowing them to be like, Oh shit. The whole I'm not alone aspect of that or the whole like I can now have yeah. that. That's exactly it. Like that's that's why every show I'm screaming it. That's the whole I mean, I don't want to say that's the shtick because that implies that it's a fake thing, but that's always been like, you know, I I'm up there, I have a microphone and a lot of people are listening and I want everybody in there to hear me say like, "Hey guys, I am mentally ill. I have depression, anxiety, I get panic attacks. There's nothing wrong with it." And if I scream it into a microphone, maybe it's easier for the the people who hear it to be like, "Hey, I deal with that too. I'm gonna I'm gonna seek out some help." It 100. It's a shtick when there's nothing backing it. It's a message when it's organic mm. and true. Yeah, and that's the message: is just talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. I love that. I I really love that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can really, really say because I that. 
I feel is like fundamental, I guess, to everything. Like yeah. for yourself, for the band, for the music, what everything's about. And um, I guess I'll, first off, I'll just say thank you guys for being you and being human and showing <laughs> growth and putting that positivity out there. Because especially in aggressive music, can be really easy to not fall into tropes, but fall into the negative aspects of yeah. that aggression and to vent not yeah, the wrong the, way. The image of the hardcore guys. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, the tough guys. Yeah, yeah, and I find um, having representation of people that can do that, act like that, but also be like, no, don't be afraid to hug your homies. Fuck racists, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. we love you. Like, that's yeah. that's very, I, I know it sounds like a t uh, Sunday day special, but very wholesome at its core. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. That's like... That's what we want to do. That's exactly the way we want it to come across is just like positivity and love. Fuck yeah. And for yeah. most bands, even if it's hidden behind song titles, like I will fucking kill you. Dude, I, I, hey, it, 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 <laughs> it gets the edge lord attention and then they get synced <laughs> into the message, which is another thing yeah. Mark's very good at, I think, with him being a very tough dude that you would not want to fuck with. You get on his bad side, it's going to be a bad time for you. But you have to cross certain lines that, quite frankly, mm. he shouldn't be crossing to begin with. We played a show once, and when he was introducing uh, I Will Fucking Kill You, he was talking about how, I don't like bullies. I will beat up a bully. Citizen Rage are the bullies' bullies. Yes. I was like, that's... That's awesome. We're the bullies, bullies. I love that. It's like the whole take back. My, oh, wow. It's so weird that this is the movie that comes to mind. But like it's a whole Jack Frost element of it. Like, no, sometimes you need to stick up for yourself. It's a weird Michael Keaton film. Father dies, comes back as a reanimated snowman. And yeah, there's I, I wasn't sure which one you were talking about, because there's also the one with the animatronic snowman that has sex with Shannon Elizabeth. Oh my God. It's like a very similar plot, but it's a horror movie. It came out around the same time. That's, I'm serious. That's so and it's weird. it's also called Jack Frost. Yeah, it's also Jack Frost, but not the Michael Keaton one. Dude, okay. That yeah, and, uh, the snowman has its way with Shannon Elizabeth in a shower and goes on a killing spree. It came out around the same time. Here, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, do the Wow, I'm just flabbergasted. Being like, wow, what timing? You know. That's why when you said it's just like Jack Frost, I was like, uh. Which, which one are we one? talking about here? <laughs> oh, God. That's fucking funny. Um, uh, Aaron's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, that's that's about how, what I'm reacting about with that, too. Oh, I'm just wait like, a minute. I can put it. I'll, I'll uh, put it in the chat. Yeah. My mind has been blown everywhere. If that worked. Nope. That. Oh, yeah, Dang. it did. Oh, yeah, it, it did. Gave, it gave way more of a link than you needed, but it should go to the IMDb. After an accident that left murderer Jack Frost dead in genetic material, the vengeful killer returns as a murderous snowman to exact his revenge <laughs> on the man who sent him to be executed. Directed, directed by Michael, Co Michael Cooney. Written by Jeremy Page and Michael Cooney. Starring Scott Michael, Chrisville Allport, and Stephen Mandel. What the... 1997. Wow. Wow. You're welcome for that. You should watch it. It's a riot. Not I, not in a good way. It's not a good movie by any means, I'm, but I'm pinning it's that. worth a giggle. I'm saving that and pinning that for later because that just the kind Christmas of... Christmas classic. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, usually, like, with most bands, I ask, like, okay, so what's, like, the history and the transition of everything been? Like, you guys have had a few member changes and a few fill-ins, but I, I don't know how like how much there is to talk about in that in regards to like for you guys, you've kind of always been what you're about, which I think is really cool. Like from day one, but if there's more, not entirely. Okay. Not entirely. Um, when it started before I was in, it came from, uh, basically it was like the ashes of BDFM. Um, started as a new band, but everybody <laughs> was still partying way too hard and drinking and fighting all the time. And okay. First, 
they started writing songs that were just they were like drunken jokes mm. okay. and uh yeah and right. i remember being at their first show in a basement and they played and i was talking to mark and i was like dude musically it's great but like lyrically you're better than this like you know you're smarter than this you can say better shit than this come on man do we need another band singing about this stuff and it, it he went home and i think he wrote nonsense shortly after that the one about uh the stepdad on it's from it's the from Blue the red ep, EP I think. it's on the red, track red number two on the red ep i'm looking at your yeah. spotify because i'm being here like i'm curious so was yeah. the transition like the the red green blue pink ep would you consider that like the transitionary phase when citizen rage went from what they were when before you came into what they were becoming or... um no I, it was even before that because like mrt from the first ep was one of those goofy joke songs but they were even starting um on there because uh like seeing red is about just getting just like having anger issues and it started there and they they took away a lot of the goofy goofy shit that was in the band at the very start of it um but okay. even then yeah it's then we started writing then the social issues start coming in and then the mental health kind of comes in a few eps later and i think it a, a part of it was we're just we're getting older where we want to write about things that directly affect us like i don't know i'm i'm not funny i can't write a funny joke song so that's why i don't bother i tried that in a band i was in when i was like 19 and it just it was dumb it's it's funny so is a thing that's hard to force you are funny on stage in your moments you are fucking hilarious i guess but it, it, it's one of those comedies not easily forced on most people i find uh, yeah and and i think in punk rock there's too much of that like in order to be funny, you just have to be offensive. It's like, no, that's, we don't need to do that. Uh, and then we get older, we start writing about more personal shit and more like serious. Yeah. Serious, serious shit. Hell yeah. Uh, P I N D has another question here. Um, how yeah. do you acclimate a new member when the rest of the band has been together forever? Uh, tour. That's actually, that's solid advice. That's the best way you're going to figure out if you guys are going to work together or not. Because That's how I joined. I was a temporary fill-in for a two-week tour, like a Western Canada. Oh, we missed a little bit of it. It was supposed to be Winnipeg to Vancouver. Um, and I was, it was temporary because the bass player couldn't do it. So by the end of that tour, I was like, I love this. Like, I want to stay in this band. Can we swing it? And they're like, well, we talked about getting another guitar player. We'll just move our bass player to guitar. You stay on bass. Like, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it was the same with Ross because the guitar player couldn't do a, what was it? I think it was a 10 day tour. It was when we did that show at uh, Liquid. Oh, okay. That was Ross's, yeah, his little break in period. That's where it's so like, cool. You're, yeah, you're a hired gun up until a tour. And then when the, when the tour is done, it doesn't have to be a big tour, even like a four or five day trip. Once you're finished, once you've spent days in a van and nights in a hotel room and hauling gear around at four o'clock in the morning with a person, you get a pretty good gauge on whether you can do that long term or whether you can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah, you jam a lot. And then as soon as you get a road trip, that's when it's official. Hell yeah. I like that. That kind of, add, um, it's not the entire answer. So I do feel like I can ask this one too. Um, what's it like being the, outsider coming in like you did in 2015 um it was it was pretty easy i think because i'd known them for quite a while like mm -hmm. mark and i went back to shit i think i was 21 when i met mark and i would have been 30 when i joined citizen rage okay so you had a good like nine, nine years yeah yeah we'd known each other for a long time and I knew J Dog as well, not quite as like for the same length of time, but not quite as well. But like we it wasn't like a stranger coming in. I think it was probably a little harder when Sean joined or when Chase joined. That's but, fair. Uh, even even when we brought Ross in, like he was a homie. He wasn't just a hired gun that we found. No, he he seemed like he was already within like the sphere of you guys. Like, yeah, very and, much so. And he's a solid dude. I I, I honestly I love what yeah, his birthday he is. He's what? he's such a big lovable doofus. He, I love he really is. I love yeah. I love Ross Day. 
Ross stays a day I look forward to every day on social media. There aren't many of those days, but <laughs> yeah. that is one. Um, yeah. Oh, God, I had something, and then I lost it. Wait. Oh, yeah. Um, based off, like, what you said, like, touring and uh, how you kind of started as a fill-in, I think that's actually really solid. Just an advice for either individuals that are maybe looking to start a band or get into bands or people that still want to get out and do stuff is just find bands that are local and learn their shit. A lot of bands appreciate having fill-ins. And even if you're just there for a show or two, you're getting that yeah. itch. You're sh um, getting to play with people. You'll maybe meet other people through that and interact. Yeah. Or you might end up just getting the gig permanently. But that's yeah. really solid advice is if you put in the work to actually be – it's weird to say this way, but be helpful to the band like as just someone coming in. You'll get a lot more respect coming in instead of being someone who's kind of – going along uh, asking for everyone to provide things to you yeah hell yeah um what else do i want to get into i think we've we've covered a uh, hell is there anything you want to personally talk about mikey i love that we've been able to do this yeah i, I feel like i've known you for like nine years and this is the most that we've ever talked <laughs> that's so ridiculous thinking about yeah. it too it's like you were saying at the start it's always just like the real quick like, hey, good set. Hey, thanks for great sound. Hey, man, so uh, your, your bass has DI out, right? Okay, so <laughs> I might have to come and turn you down or tell you to turn down. We good? <laughs> Dude, that that last show at the Mainliner was... I know I told you this more than once, mm -hmm. but it's still so hilarious to me. When we did the whole tour, and a lot of them were, like, not great sound guys, not great rooms, not great systems... So me and Ross got real good at knowing how loud we have to be to match with each other and to match with the drums. Yeah. So we do that on stage, and then you come up there like, no, you're way too loud. You turn <laughs> me right down. I was like, excuse you, what? <laughs> no, no. He's, you've never had band sound with Nate. Just let it go. Just, he'll do it. Hey. And then we started playing, and I was like, oh, I wish every show sounded like this. I, and I don't, I don't want to bash any of the other sound techs, but all I say is I care that – the bands that I have on stage sound yeah. good. I will do everything in my ability, including panic like a madman looking for one <laughs> fucking cable or adapter five minutes before a set just <laughs> to be sure. Like, because my goal, yeah. my job is to make sure you guys can do your job. And yeah. I don't get the mindset of, and it's not all. I find usually it's young, inexperienced sound tags, but the whole, oh, you fucked with me? Yeah. Oh, sure sucks when that's just just a bit too quiet, right? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, I turned it up. No, no, I didn't turn. I turned it up. Further, <laughs> yeah, yeah. further. Can I get a you little want... more? Can I get a little more? <laughs> yeah, and it's just if you care about what you're doing and you care about the bands and you care about the show because it's no longer just me and you or me and the bands. Yeah. It's me, you guys, and everyone in the venue. Everyone yeah. who paid Every to be there person paid money to get in through that door. They want it to sound good. Exactly. And the last thing you mm -hmm. want to do either as a, a promoter running a show or as the sound tech being a part of the show is have people walk away being like, oh, yeah, they were fucking tight. Couldn't hear shit, though. Yeah. So couldn't make heads or tails of it whatsoever. And sometimes yeah. sometimes that happens. Audience, no offense to you guys, but sometimes you stand in the wrong fucking spot. Sometimes, say that again. sometimes the, the audience stands in the wrong spot like sometimes <laughs> yeah that's true like i remember um this was so weird at moments fest because i remember because the stage was outdoor and yeah. mixing stuff i'm like I, where the fuck is the guitar like why do i keep losing the guitar am i losing power am like doing things what's the fuck's going on mark just comes in he's like no stand over here <laughs> See, you're good the wind is fucking with you right now because you're just it's just coming through right in yep. front of everything and fucking yep. with it and it's it's amazing how little things in a venue can affect how you're hearing i personally yep. love pushing to the front for like big shows because i'm that dumbass who's like no if i if i paid to be there i'm going to the fucking front i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm headbanging i got the rail i got so much space let's fucking go but um, the downside to that is you are primarily going to be getting the monitor mix over the PA yeah. mix. And it's actually the guys 20 feet, 30 feet back that are just in there being like, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, there sounds we great go. in here. Fuck yeah. So um, I guess that's a little tip for anyone in um, that just loves going to shows. Be aware of the venue and what's there because um, the engineers and the bands are usually at working with that to try to make sure it sounds good almost everywhere. Sometimes there's some spots where it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, and against the barricade is generally going to be one of those spots where it doesn't sound good <laughs> exactly oh the bands fucking love it though like if you want to go there oh, and absolutely, the energy, yeah. like go up there. against the barricade is the experience at the back of the room is the good sound but exactly it's yeah, fun that, for the whole you family get the connection at the barricade i actually i love that there's there's the experience up front where you're like no i just want to watch the fucking band yeah. I want to, there's a drummer there that i'm just I, i'm studying right now yeah. or whenever you play and i'm not working sound it's like yeah i'm watching this bass play this guy's fun. I'm watching this guy play. That's, that psychs me out. Don't tell me that. Oh, come on, man. You're you're an entertaining you, individual. But, <laughs> but um then after that you have you have the little bit of a listening crew where you're like, you know, this isn't too bad. It's a little pushy behind me because directly behind you is the pit. That's that's where everyone goes for the fun. You know, yeah. gotta get some uh, get some energy out. And then right behind the pit is like all the like, yeah, no, we're just chilling. Enjoying yeah. our drinks, enjoying the music, got a good view. And it, it's amazing how that works out. Um, for you, what is your favorite thing about playing live? Um, connecting with people. Like the way the message that Citizen Rage puts out, people just, they really connect with it. Every time we play a show, we have people coming up afterwards and saying thanks for thanks for saying what you said about mental health and thanks for bringing this shit to the open. More people need to do that. And we've had a lot of like, we've had really heartfelt talks with people who would come up after and they're just hugging us and thanks so much. And I, I don't want to sound like I'm sucking my own dick about this, but that's like, that's the biggest thing because the message is so important to me. So we play live and it connects with people. That's like, that's the best part of it for me. That's, and I love that. And, and, it ties back into the whole like practicing what you preach too and um mm. with practicing what you preach now too and recognizing that you weren't there before and getting there because i think that's a huge thing for just anyone dealing with anything to be able to recognize about themselves because that's when the true change and the true growth and everything really can happen and having that positive influence um coming out uh, from you guys is really good and i think honestly for you as weird as it might say i love for for a while for you it may have been a shtick i think everyone else having it be the actual message helped you kind of reinforce that for yourself because it only takes so much for I, someone. I, I gotta clarify that because it's it never was a shtick and like it i i did always mean it no, I mean more it so was, like for you mentally, like the whole like I was saying it, but I wasn't willing to go and do the thing that I was saying it's okay to do. That's why I mean yeah. like the shtick for it's, like mentally of it being yeah. not fully there, like loving yeah. the like, message and putting it out there, but not being able to back it up for yourself. Versus yeah, it was, I could, I could be open about it when I was on stage and saying like, this is what this song's about and this is what I deal with and there's no shame in talking and getting help. That part was always real. It's just that I wasn't yeah. getting help. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, what happens when you get off of the stage where you yeah. can be the free version of yourself. What mm. what can you take off stage from yeah. that and grow from? I think yeah. that's huge. Because for me, like having this talk with you. Oh, Nate, have you or Mikey ever heard of Mad Pride? I don't think I've heard of Mad Pride. I have not. Okay. Uh, just put a link in there. I'm going to send it to Mikey for later because if you want us both to check it out, I want to send it his way. But um, I was going to say, like, because for you I'm and I, like... Put notes in my phone here. Hell yeah. I love it. Um, uh, for you and I, I love that uh, we're here in this moment having this talk because um, even throughout that, that, that time that everyone really got into themselves, and by that, like, the pandemic and not having things out like... Yeah. A lot of people severed ties with people. I severed ties with a lot of people. I uh, know you've done the same. Uh, we had ours. Uh, I don't even remember why, and that's not important because that's way in the past. But like even you and I at a time, there was a time where we just couldn't talk because we were both in our own way. 
Yeah. And I think it's fucking awesome that years after that, years after doing our own things to kind of work on ourselves and get there, that this is where we are now. And this is kind of the to- everything we've talked about today. Like, it's, yeah. I think it's a reinforcement of, again, the, the message of not just the band, but I think ultimately what you and everyone individually try to do outside of the band, too. Because you're all fantastic people. Like, I only get to see Citizen Rage once in a while, but I run into one, like, one or two of you whenever I make it to your end of the woods. Mm. And I love that. And I love that this positivity is continuing to grow. I love watching what Citizen Rage itself as a band is becoming, not just outside of the positivity, but yeah. watching yeah. you guys get that Daglo show after going through, or Daglo tour after going through all yeah. of that turmoil. And watching crowds grow, and not just grow because there's other bands on the bill that people want to see. No, yeah. you are the band that people want to see. Um, I well, know, he- like Medicine Hat's one of those places where, like, we have a crowd in Medicine Hat, but we earned that. Like, we played a lot of shitty shows in Medicine Hat to build that. And so now when we go out there, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Like, there's a lot of people that are here for us, and we fucking worked for it. And you, and that's exactly you guys worked for it. Cause I remember like, I don't do the promotion aspect anymore. That's something I knew I had to step away from. Cause that weighed on my mental health astronomically, yeah. the whole filling the plate too full, like something yeah. suffers because of it. But you were always the band where it's like, all right, who hasn't played here recently? Who do I need to book to make sure I have fucking people coming? Because <laughs> they have not disappointed. No one shut like no one can shut up about them for like a month after they play. And it's like um there's very few bands that had that effect here. There was Fall City Fall, then there was Dusty Tucker, and then there was you guys. And I love that although um Dusty Tucker's gone now, like they're doing their farewell show in a week or two now. Speaking of which, if you're in the Red Deer area, you you better go check that fucking show out, everyone who's watching. That is that is one worth watching, but um, watching you all grow in your variety of ways at different points in times, like Fall City Fall had their rise in the late 2000s. Dusty Tucker kind of after that, ironically, actually, I think started really gaining momentum in Alberta, especially. And then you guys now at a point where, in my opinion, you're one of the headliners for Medicine Hat. When it comes down to you guys are coming, cool. You kind of dictate dictate things in regards to like where are we playing who do you want to who do you want to play with and what's the guarantee which is usually <laughs> usually the the whole is like here's what we can offer versus with you guys most of the time it's like all right what do you want <laughs> <laughs> and usually well, we, we can do it much. Oh, that's and, the uh, thing that the main liner's got a pinball machine so I'll play there anytime dude the main liner we we are very lucky in Medicine Hat to have the venues we have. Like, sure, we don't go to Liquid all the time, but I like now that we can be like, that's the venue we go to when we know we can fill the fucking place. Like, when the mainliner is too small, we can go yeah. there. But to have the mainliner as that whole, like, it's the testing ground, but it's a testing ground that everyone would want to play. Like, sure, it's just a floor. Like, there's no stage, like rising in any way it's just the monitor's place to be like yes this is the line divide between stage and audience (laughs) but it's so intimate and it's so cool to have that space um gifted to us by rob and the mainliner to do stuff because having that allows us to do kind of or allows bands to do what you guys did a bit easier i think because if we say book a band like you guys and then Fuck it. Let's. We already taught, brought him up on Silly Bike. Say so it's like, all right, yeah. we want everyone to see Silly Bike this this <laughs> weekend. How do we do that? Put Citizen Rage on the bill. Go to the mainliner. Find one or two other bands to round it all yeah. out, and yeah. you are set. And I love that that's there, and I love that you guys are like one of the staples of being like, oh no. If a band puts in the work and does their shit people will come out of the woodworks to see them. We, we might not think that we have people that'll come, but no, they'll, they'll fucking come. 
And you guys are also very gracious with the bands that you'll play with. You don't just stick to your style of music. You'll play oh God, with no. fucking anyone. And that's also a really cool thing. Yeah, we have uh, we got asked in interviews, like, are there any bands that you won't play with? And we're like, well, no. There's, We'll play any bill. We'll play with any genre as long as we're not on with, like, Nazi bands or homophobes or any of that. Like, yeah. We won't fuck with any of that. But genre-wise, nope. There, there, there is a limit. Play, yeah, yeah. But for genres, age, like, none of that. Nope, doesn't matter. Put us on with pop bands. We've done... We did a punk versus metal one night where we were on the punk side, and then the next day we played a metal versus hip hop show, and then we were on the metal side. That's and that was fucking like cool. Two nights in a row, yeah. That's... We're a punk band one night going up against metal. We're a metal band the next night going against hip hop. I love that. I love multi multi genre stuff because I find when you yeah. put in the right artists of the of those genres together, the audience, even if they're foreign to one of the styles. Yeah. They'll get it. By the end of the night, they'll get it. I think that's the yeah. thing that I love the most about when um, I tried doing multi-genre shows here, and I think Citizen Rage was on one or two, but watching the hip-hop crowd come out yeah. and then get into a band with breakdowns and being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Ooh, what's this guy's name? Oh, this is Creepy. Hello, Creepy. He's giving the face like, hey, hi. Look, say hi. Creepy, over here. <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's <laughs> such a adorable pup i love that face there everyone you just got a treat okay you just got awesome dog <laughs> um is there anything else you would like to talk about i i'm kind of running blank we've covered a lot of stuff but if there's anything you want to briefly um, bring up i would like to say thank you for accommodating the fact that i'm a fucking caveman when it comes to this computery shit oh, oh, i'm constantly gosh. sending you messages what do i do how do i do this what do i do hey you were willing to figure it out, and that's the best part. Just being like, "Hey, we're we're on Discord." Yeah, it's basically just another like chat forum. Really easy. Get it. Add me. I'll take care of it. Take care of you from there. <laughs> and um, yeah. thank um, you for being well, here. I'm, oh man, thanks for like. I don't know. I don't take compliments well, but I feel like you've given me more than a few tonight, and I appreciate that. I don't want to seem like non gracious. I just get super awkward about it, but thank you. No problem. As someone who finds it very hard to take compliments, I completely understand. Mm. It's just that that little bit of, I don't know, makes me anxious, and I don't know why. Yeah. And so I yeah. completely understand. Every compliment I've hurled your way, I mean with 100% sincerity. Um, I love that. Thank you. You guys, Citizen Rage can be found on every platform if i'm not mistaken youtube instagram Correct. facebook spotify um so yeah, everyone Bandcamp, Bandcamp. Uh, apple music a bunch that i've never even heard of it's amazing how many platforms are out there every time i open yeah, up distro kid and they're like hey do you want to add it to a new store i'm like how many of you are there how yeah it's like when same thing when we got on distro kid and they're like you're now streaming live on like whatever I'm like I've never heard of any of that but cool yeah get it out there yep we're gonna put your material in here <laughs> yeah you are I love it it's so yeah. crazy it's so crazy like how many are in there especially um yeah. just the fact that more ad so everyone please be sure to go and give Citizen Rage some love follow them on whatever platforms you like go and stream for worse or better and then I'll say, you know, you can go through every EP. They're they're not that long. They're not. <laughs> they're they're di really they're not. digestible and they're colorful. I mean, you got black, yeah. pink, blue, green, and red. Like I think they max out at like sixteen minutes for the longest one, something like that. There you go. See, guys, you, you, within an hour and a half, you know, you'll be through it all. You can have your favorite EP, and then you guys can discuss uh, wherever amongst yourselves which EP is the best EP right now. Yeah. <laughs> um the full length is coming real soon that's what i've been meaning to ask you okay one last thing i am <laughs> okay. sorry all right <laughs> new music yes have you been recording if so like you said when can we expect stuff and you said album meaning yes longer Ooh. full length Ooh, how many songs are we looking at uh i think it's 10 10 or 11 hell yeah 
And yep. have you already recorded or are you guys just kind of recorded? It's done. It's mixed. It's mastered. It's on uh, wasted wax records. The artwork's done. We're just finalizing some of the layout and the printing details, but it's coming. We don't have a date, but like real soon. All right. So, um, you know how I was telling all of you to go and do that following stuff. No, you go do that right, right now because, um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I didn't realize, like, For Worse or Better coming out recently is is nice, but I didn't realize it's been basically two years since Black came out. And yeah. I'm just sitting here going, wait, what? No. No, no. Yeah, For Worse or Better is on the album. That was the first single where we might do another music video and do another single, but uh, we're just, like, we want to get the record out because it's done, completely recorded. There's a... And- uh, there's a cover on it, our first ever cover. Oh, ooh! Yeah. I don't know if I should reveal that. Maybe I'll sit on that. Sit but there on is that a cover. one. There's a, but there's a yeah. cover. Okay. It's a it's a very well respected Canadian punk band. Not like a big huge band, but bigger than we'll ever get, I'm sure. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we talked to them, and they were totally down with us doing it, so we put it on the album. There's That's... some really really fancy bass work in it. It took me a long fucking time there. to learn. It. Ah, uh, see, that's what I was, uh, that's what I was gonna be like. I'm like, oh, what, what, uh, what, what are you throwing? If I put at it us? in the chat, will uh, if I put it in the chat, does everybody see it or just you? Um, I can make it so no one else sees it, or I can make it so that they see it. It's up to you. Uh, no, I don't want everybody to know. Okay, okay. I'll so, tell. I'll uh, I'll message you about it after. Yeah, do that. Do that. Do that. Then I'll check it out after the stream. That way, I get the sneak peek. <laughs> yeah, I love that. In exchange uh, for the silly bike sneak peek. Oh yeah. See? Equal. Equal exchange. Um yeah, everyone you get a little, you get a little. I love it. Everyone's saying thank you, Mikey. I know I've said thank you a few times, but once again. Thank I, you I, so much. Thank you, everybody who's watching. I didn't think anybody'd be interested in listening to me ramble. Hey, sometimes those that just love finding out stuff about music will take whatever they can and they <laughs> came here. I'm somehow they're watching me and you. I'm I'm double mm-hmm. shocked. So um, all of you, thank you guys for being a part of this. Mikey, thank you for taking an hour and a bit out of your evening. For yeah. to thank be you, me. Nate. No problem. I will let you go. Enjoy the rest of your night. Um, once again, everyone, go check out Citizen Rage and Mikey. Until next time, I can't wait to see your beautiful face again. Fucking A. Love you, buddy. Love you, too. Take care, man. Cheers. That was a great interview. I, yeah, Mikey is good shit. Mikey is just really good shit. Um, Thank you, everyone, for getting the cues. I'm going to go check all that out. What?